if your man ain't doing these things, he definitely is not putting God first. And I know y'all want to know what three things, right? Well, look, man, it's three signs that you'll definitely know if this man will put God first in your relationship, in any relationship that he is in, right? And I know y'all want to know, and I know y'all probably thinking it's the regular basic things. No, I ain't about to be basic. Yes, he should be reading the Bible. He should be having devotions. He should have some godly friends around so that he can be accountable, take responsibility. He should be trying to go to church. If not, he should be trying to find a church home. He should be praying. He should definitely be doing all those things. But that ain't the meat and potatoes, ladies. He need to be doing these three things. You need to see these three signs. These three signs will definitely show you if that man is putting God first and if he'll put God first. So the first sign is going to be he pulls you closer to God. And I know y'all like, what? Yes, pulls you closer to God. Look, you could tell if a person pulls you closer to God or if they pull you away from God, right? Like, do you feel like you got a stronger relationship with God? Do you feel like you could call on God? Do you feel like you want to go to God? Because that's how it feels when you have people in your life that definitely put God first. And when I say put God first, I don't mean that they are perfect. No, but this person consistently has God on their mind. They're consistently trying to do what is right. They're consistently thinking about what is what does God feel about this? And I know y'all know the saying, what would Jesus do? Do they think like that? Or do they not bring up God? Do they not try to stand on the morals? Do they not try to treat people right, right? Do you see them doing things that are against God and then they're like, oh, oh, it's just fine, it's fine, right? And you're looking at them trying to figure out, will they ever do the right thing? And when I say do the right thing, like you know what's right or wrong. And if he goes to God, he should definitely know what's right or wrong because God talks about this all the time, right? You don't want a man that's gonna be lying to you, right? Like he got a little small lie like, Oh yeah, baby, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be there in, in 15 minutes. He ain't even left the crib. He talking about he in the car? A little white lie? Mm -mm. Nah, you gotta pay attention to that. So is he pulling you closer to God? Do you see yourself going to God more? Do you see him making choices towards God more? Do you see him asking for God's help? Do you see him speaking to you in love? Do you see him? going to the Bible? Do you see him running to pray when he's going through things, right? Because the thing is, is if, he, if he's doing this in his life individually for his own life, right? Then that means he's an asset. That means it's going to add to your life because whatever he's doing in his life, when he comes into your life, he's bringing that along with him. So if he ain't going to God, guess what? He's bringing that along with him, which is going to spill into your life and which could definitely pull you away. But if he's going to God in his own life, then guess what? That's coming in and that's going to pull you closer to God when y'all are together. So that's definitely something to pay attention to. And I know you can actually feel it as well, right? You can definitely observe yourself like, do I go to God while I'm with him? Does he think about God? Does he talk about God? Has anything changed in my life when it comes to God? Whether it's bad or good, that's what you got to pay attention for. And you got to ask, ask the spirit to reveal it to you. But I guarantee you should be able to see that. It's easy to see when a man pulls you closer to God, right? If you got to ask the question, then that gives you the answer. All right. So does he pull you closer to God or does he pull you away from God? That's the first one. The next one is, does he still choose God when it comes to others in his life? Now, reason why I'm bringing this up, because a lot of people, especially women, I'm sorry, I'm going to tell you because a lot of women say this to me. They be thinking, I even had somebody ask me this in one of the comments before, I think in one of my TikToks. They was like, can you tell this by how he treats you? And I was trying to tell them, no, you can't. It's hard to see a lot of times someone's spirit, because this is a spirit thing, right? Again, it's not just the Bible and the praying and, and going to church, because you can read the Bible, you can pray and go to church and still don't choose God. I'm trying to help you see if this man puts God first. And if he will, and if he does, he will in your relationship. I'm trying to help you see his character, his spirit, right? So in order to see that, you have to see how he treats others. You have to see how he is with others. And why do I say this? The Bible says, the Bible says to be selfless to others, 
right? To do things for others, to forgive others, to be kind to others, to think of others, to put them before yourselves, right? To, to love others, to provide for them, right? To sacrifice yourself for them, right? To pray for them, to do so many things for them, for other people, right? So even though you're thinking about how you feel and how he makes you feel, I want to let you know something. The devil can make you feel good too. Then he do this with Eve. So it's not about what he does for you because anyone can, can fake something for you. But you can see someone's true self towards people they don't know, especially people that they don't even know, right? So that means pay close attention to how this person acts or how this guy acts when it's somebody he doesn't know, right? Someone on the street, someone when he's driving, someone when you're someone that's a customer service represent, representative, maybe when you're in a restaurant, pay close attention to how he treats the waitress or the waiter, right? Pay close attention to how he treats them because a person's character, a person's integrity, a person's spirit will be seen by how they treat other people who are not you. God's spirit has to be consistent, right? It does, it does not change. And what I mean, it does not change. That means I don't treat you good and don't think about treating them good, right? And you might think, well, they're different. No, they're not. Because to have God's spirit, it is for all people. Yes, I'm gonna be mad. Yes, I'm gonna wanna, you know, I might feel a way towards people, but at the end of the day, my spirit wants to do the right thing. The spirit corrects you. The spirit's fruit is produced, right? The fruit of the spirit will be seen in this man's life and it's not just towards you. If he has the fruit of the spirit, it's not just for you. It's for the world. God told you to do this for the world so you will see it in his life. It becomes a lifestyle. So that is another thing to see. Jesus did this for others. He didn't just do this for a person that he loved more than everybody else. God has no favorites. So this man has to have God's spirit. If he has God's spirit, then he will have the same exact mindset. The spirit will lead him in the same way that it did Jesus. No favorites. I don't love you more than them, right? Yes, I may have a more closer intimacy with you and I may feel closer to you. But at the same time, righteousness and love is righteousness and love in God's eyes. He needs you to be consistent across the board and not be picking people who to give this to or else it's not his spirit or else it's not love. So you got to pay attention to if he's choosing God around other people. If he's choosing God when it comes to other people, is he choosing and thinking about God when it comes to other people? Because I guarantee if he is, he's definitely choosing God. All right. The next one is conviction, right? And yeah, that goes a little bit hand in hand with both of the other two, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit more specific. Conviction. That, that don't got to be towards others, right? That can even be towards himself, do you see him having conviction? Conviction is a big thing because this deals with your conscience, right? It's, this shows him having a clear conscience and wanting to choose God even when he does wrong to someone, right? Can you see him apologizing to anybody? Do you see him taking accountability of anything? Do you see him being humble and vulnerable? Do you see him apologizing? Now, I'm going to speak on apologizing because I believe Someone who truly apologized, not just for the sport, not just to get over something, but truly wants to apologize for something that they did wrong to you, right? Because, because if he has a prideful heart, an extremely prideful heart, the conviction ain't going to be there because you might think he did something and then he'll be looking like, I ain't do nothing. What are you talking about? That was your fault. That's your issue. You're insecure. But no, no, God's spirit. Jesus took the blame. God's spirit will take the blame too. God's spirit corrects you. When you did something wrong, even when you think you didn't do anything wrong, it causes you to sacrifice yourself, to die to yourself for someone else. Okay, what can I do here that, that gives love, right? Okay, I know that I may not have done this, but to that person, I did do that. To this, to them, it did hurt them. So you know what? I apologize because I actually didn't mean to do that. In the moment, I didn't know that it would affect you, but I truly apologize and I would like to correct that. You know, if you need anything or if you if you would like me to do this in a different way, 
Just let me know, but I didn't mean to hurt you. I truly apologize for that. And I want you to know that I care about you. And I would never do that on purpose. But instead, if you're not convicted, that person is going to be defensive. That person is going to be offended, right? And they're not going to apologize. They're not going to correct anything. Does this person think about others? Conviction corrects you and causes you to think about other people, right? So conviction reveals a person's character, true character, right? I mean, the inside, it allows you to see inside of someone. This is why it is imperative that you pay close attention to if this man is convicted. That's one main thing that will show you God's spirit. That is one main thing that will show you if a man is truly following Jesus, right? Because if you read in the Bible, you read in the scriptures, you read in these stories, the God, God didn't change this man's life. Why is he not convicted, right? If, if he's not convicted, then what has really changed in his life? What has changed? Because if he could do something that he used to do and don't be like, I probably shouldn't have did that. I probably need to work on not doing that no more, right? Why is he not convicted? If he's not having sex, but then he has sex by mistake, let's say he slip up, backslide, and he don't feel bad about it? How, how, how? You have to, the spirit corrects you. The spirit says, yo, 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 yo. Now you know the father didn't want you to do that. Now you know, now you know you probably shouldn't have did that to that person. Now you know you probably shouldn't have got that person in trouble. Go over there and talk to them. The spirit is like, hey, 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 go over there and talk to them. Go over there and apologize to them. Go over there and make it right. Go over there and give them a hug when they cuss at you. Go over there and communicate to that person when you don't even want to communicate to them. Go over there and do the very thing that is hard for you to do so that that person can see the love inside of you. Conviction causes you to do what is hard for you to do so that God's spirit can be seen through this person. Conviction humbles you. Conviction corrects you. Conviction shows God's heart and spirit. This is why you need to make sure this man is convicted because if he is convicted, now you can trust that when you both have issues in your relationship and your marriage, he's going to God. You can trust that when he's reading that Bible, when he's in Proverbs, because Proverbs would convict the mess out of you. When you in Proverbs, Proverbs is like, mm, you should be quiet. Mm, you need to go to God. Mm. That he's over here like, dang, dang, God, Lord, forgive me for doing that. And then he comes to you and apologizes and corrects it. When he's in church, God is correcting him. When, when you feel bad and he's done something wrong to you, God has revealed it to him. When he's even thinking about doing something wrong, the spirit will be like, uh-uh, don't do that. And now it stops him. You got to pay attention to if he does that to you, but you can see it more with other people, right? You can see if he's willing to apologize to other people. You can see if he feels like he needs to correct things with other people, all right? Now, these are the top three signs that will definitely show you if a man will put God first in a relationship. And I know y'all like, why? How can you how can you guarantee that he'll put it in a relationship? Because if he's choosing to do these things on his own without you in his life, right? You can see that by it not being connected to you. That's why I said, you gotta look at how we do it to other people and for others and just how he speaks. You can see it inside of him. If it's not just for you, you can tell he will do it because he's standing on this. He's living like this regardless if it has to do with you or not. So guess what? When you're in a relationship and when you're married, it's going to be enhanced for you because he loves you. He's in a stronger commitment. This is why he does it with God because he's in this commitment, this covenant with God. And the same thing he does for God, he's going to do it for you. All right. So whatever he does for God in his own relationship, he definitely going to do it for you. Because God is going to lead him to love you. All right. So these are the three signs. I hope you wrote this down. I love y'all. And I'm going to get it y'all when I get it y'all.